Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well. International break is finally over, luckily. But unfortunately, we can't start focusing on the double game. Lazio Juve, Juve Lazio, Serie A, Coppa Italia, because there is a breaking news. Unfortunately, we are here to confirm that there is indeed a release clause in the contract of Gleison Bremer between 60 and 70 million euro. Huge news, big news, shocking news, worrying news. We'll speak about that one, giving you the details, because I know that the reactions of people online are totally out of control. Probably also correctly, people are starting to worry. And I made an exercise, and I'm sure you will love the exercise. What can Juventus 24-25 look like without the strong Brazilian defender? What can Juventus 24-25 look like if we are cashing in that money immediately? Maximo of like if you didn't yet, please continue to subscribe. We start now. And what a start. What a wake up. Because this morning I opened Corriere dello Sport, big title, Juve perdi Bremer. Juve, you lose Bremer. It's not written, you could possibly lose Bremer, there is a team interested in play Bremer. No. Juve, you lose Bremer. With a big Manchester United logo in the back, with small titles here and there, United is ready to pay 60 million euro. And then you see up on the page, una clausola troppo facile lo avvicina alla Premier. A too easy, too small close is making him going closer and closer to Premier League. It's not the first time that we are speaking about Bremer Manchester United. A lot of time we spoke about it. The interest is real. We know that United sporting director, scouts were there to observe him. So it's not new. We know it. The variable, of course, is that release clause. That's the really shocking news. Especially if later it has been confirmed by Romeo Agresti. With, we confirm, Bremer has a release clause. The variable is between 60 and 70 million euro, confirmed also by Fabrizio Romano with the formal release clause to pay and sign Gleison Bremer, and here is reassuring is a bit, will be valid from the summer 2025, so not now, the next summer. But there is already a verbal pact between the club and the entourage that if some bits are arriving already now for the same amount, well, they can take it into consideration and, and luckily, Juventus will be the one that will decide at the end for this summer. So there is no active close now, immediately in the summer. It will be for the next one. The amount has been confirmed also by Fabrizio Romano. It's between 60 and 70 million euro. I told you, eh? big news, shocking news, disaster news. Um, and we have to understand the why. That's always how I start. Before recording the video, before sharing an opinion, before explaining, I always start to understand why. Because I don't agree with management are amateur. Amateur management, they have absolutely no idea what they are doing. Um, it's stupid. There is absolutely no logic in it. What are we doing? There is always a why. And from the moment that I start understanding the why that doesn't mean i agree with the why but i can start explaining a bit and giving my opinion on a full picture why did they do it is it correct or not i believe we have to sh differentiate three things emotion part which is never good when we are speaking about deals about business because that's what we are speaking about two the financial part it's le less attractive for us and three the sporting part or three things. Let's put aside the emotion and let's start to think about financial part. I start reading again, again. I'm having the channel for four years and it's four years that I'm explaining it. But I started again to understand, to read people with, eh, but we are stupid because we sign a big player and he will go to Premier League and we will only earn 10 million euro profit because we signed him for 50 million euro from Torino. After two years, disaster, amateur. How is it even possible if we do like, that? no. This is not how it works. It is not FIFA. It is not you sign a player, you sell a player. No. When you sign a player for a value, let's say for 50 million euro, and you have a contract of five years, financially in your books, you pay back 10 million euro. More he's closer to the end of his contract, less you have him as a value in your financial books. Let's say Bremer. If we sell him this summer, Juventus decide. And luckily, we are decisions. It can be that Juventus decide to sell him only for 100 million euro this summer. 
could be, Juventus can decide. Let's say we agree on 60 million euro. Bremer is now at a word in his contract because he extended for one more year, 25 million euro. That means that you have a profit of 35 million euro, which is already totally different. Is it enough? No, we should aim for much more. If we sell him for 60 million euro next year, at that release clause where we are not decisionists anymore, we are obliged to agree if the player agrees. There you are having a profit of 40, 45, probably 45 million euro, which is already much better because the player you had him for three seasons in total. Okay, so that's important because it's not like 50 and 60, otherwise we will go crazy and we'll never understand how it works on transfer market. And that's the fundamental, the basic of everything. This is, for example, why a Chelsea that is or was signing player, they were always giving contract of eight years. Sometimes they even tried with more years, but eight years. Why? Because you have more time to pay back in your financial books. You understand why? Now, that being said, why did Juventus put a close? That's the first question that we have to answer. You will not like what I will tell you. You will really not like what I will tell you. Who is never putting realistic clauses in their contract? Strong financial, strong sporting teams or teams that are part of a really strong league where the money is not necessary. In Spain, they are obliged to put their it's by law, they are obliged to put a release clause, but they go with 1 billion euro, uh, 500 million, 200 million. I remember Neymar, 200 million euro release clause. Nobody would have even thought that it was possible to put it on. Paris Saint-Germain, they went for Neymar for 222, the release clause. Since then, all the other release clauses, they, they went up to be sure that nobody would be able to sign it. But except of Spain, where it's obliged, they don't put it because they are strong. They have the decision. They know that players want to play for their club and they don't want to leave their club. They put their condition and the player, they agree or they don't agree. Punto. In Serie A, it's starting to be totally different because you can lie to yourself. I know you will not like what I will tell you, but Serie A is now a feeder league. And that's something that we already anticipated years ago, that we would arrive to the point where Serie A would have been that transitional league. Or you come with really young players and then they are ready to move on. Fratesi, what did he say, Fratesi? I prefer to stay first a bit more in Italy to complete myself before going to the next step. Where is Tonali? And I'm speaking about Italian players. Huh? I'm not even speaking about foreign players. Ala de Licht, for example. Or other players. That's one. Or a second one, the players that do not want to go to Saudi Arabia. To still stay in Europe, close to their family. Still participating to European competition. But at the end of their career, they come in Italy. And then you have that big nucleo of Italian players. That's what Serie A is. And it will not change. It will become worse and worse and worse. That's the reality. Because Premier League is growing, growing, growing. Because other leagues, like Bundesliga, they are doing much better. La Liga, they continue to grow. Bundesliga as well. And we start going lower and lower and lower. It will be worse and worse and worse. We are the Atalanta of Serie A. We are the Ajax of Europe. We are becoming, a Serie A movement, a feeder league. This is the reality. Unless something big is changing, unless we are able to anticipate it and changing something otherwise, it will not be there. On top of that, if you are a club like Juventus, that after some beautiful glory decades, boom, because of yourself, because of the post-Ronaldo management and all the mistakes that you did, that you have to blame only yourself. You're in financial shit, we have a problem. On top of that, you have a league that is doing everything to demolish you, taking away money, 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 putting dirt on you on an image perspective. And pa, 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 pa. You arrive at a certain point where you are not strong and solid anymore to have decision on players. That's the reality. That's the reality. And I know it's harsh to hear. I know it's not funny. 
what happened during the Bremer contract negotiation. At the end of this year, 2023, December, he extended for one more year. Discussions were, we want to renew you. Do we increase your salary? No. Do we give you a bit more bonus? Well, we can speak a bit about the bonus, but not that much. But we want you one more year. After one year of Bremer, one year and a half. Because financially, it's better for the club. Because we can spread your your value in our financial books. Where the agent probably said, okay, put a release clause. No, we don't want to put a release. Well, then we don't extend. Okay, we can maybe put a release clause. We want to put a release clause. Boom, 100 million euro. I hey, know, we don't want. Because if we are thinking at 2025, that's already three years. The value of the player in your books will be around 15 million euro. You sell him for 60 million. Uh, no. What do you do then? You can't anymore be the decider. You don't have that. Soli you are not solid enough. You are not strong enough to say today in a club that is repeating you since long eh? with Scanavino, with Juntoli, with everyone. Sustainability, coming back financially, break even in the season 26, 27. That's where we need to be again, break even. We need to recover. We need to qualify to Champions League, not because it's prestige, because it's crucial financially vital that money right, then a player can say his rules and that's where you're obliged to say yes that's the reality that's the reality otherwise you would have not extended 2027 now Juventus can still sell him this season for much more luckily so financially it's good could have been better would have been difficult to have better and then you have the sporting side. And that's another story. And that's where people are saying, eh, but if we continue to sell our strong players, we will never build back. We will never be the strong Juventus. If from the, we have De Ligt, we sell him. We have Bremer, two years, we sell him. We put release clauses here, there. Well, Vlaovic, Chiesa, Chiesa is on the market. Looks like, as the sport is telling us, what is Juventus doing? Selling all their best players. Not that we have so many best players, but like, how long will it take? This is the, the fear, the question of Juventini. Well, I will tell you the truth. It can be even worse. Because Bremer can be on the market already this summer. Dean Huysen can be on the market already this summer. This is what Gazzetta dello Sport is showing us. 100 million treasure for Juve. Gleison Bremer to Manchester United. The... Romanista player Dean Huysen could also potentially leave because there are clubs that are ready to offer 30, 35 million euros. And Juventus is not saying no. Why? Because probably they understood that they need to do a lot for this team. There is the coach. That's a discussion. You all want to go towards a four-man defense, but we spoke about it. The paradox of Juve. Go back and watch it. It's 18 months ago that we made that video. A Juve that is incomplete to play that 4 3 3. A Juve that is strong with a three man defense, that is strong with three men up front, that is probably not strong enough to have three midfielders. And strong, probably not strong enough because there are no fullbacks. And the wingers that we have. Mm. So Juventus needs to build a lot. Juventus needs to rebuild a lot. And we don't have a lot of budget for this summer. Even if we qualify to the FIFA World Cup, even if hopefully we qualify to Champions League, it will not be enough for doing a crazy overhaul. And that's probably why Juventus is maybe taking in consideration to accelerate the movement with the sale of Bremer for 70 million euro, 80 million euro, maybe already now. A, a Huysen, maybe it's not ready yet to be a starter, but you can cash in a lot. Avoiding to sacrifice other players. Young players like a Soleil, for example. Maybe a Chiesa. Incompatibility. Maybe the last big call before he's leaving for free if he doesn't extend. But with three players like that, you can cash in a lot and you can accelerate. And where are you going to? Well, if I see Juventus going towards names like Wendell, left back from Porto. Renildo from Atletico Madrid, left back. Mittelstadt, left back. Mitai, Albanian, left back. I really believe that we are trying to go towards a four-man defense. And that sporting side, that second thing on Bremer. I always told you, for me, the best defender of Serie A. And probably top two, top three, best defender actually in the world in a three-man defense. 
if we continue to play a three-man defense, would be a total disaster to sell Bremer. For 60, 70, 100 million euro, a total disaster. For a four-man defense, maybe they came to the conclusion that for 70 million euro, if we want to go towards a four-man defense, probably you can have another one in a four-man defense for less money. Because Bremer is probably not worth 70 million euro in a four-man defense. If you're looking at Brazil, it was not even called up. It came back in the call-up list after Gabriel was injured. He played one minute in two games. The coach said it two years ago. We focus on a four-man defense. Bremer, we never pay attention to him because he's playing with three. When was the first time that he was called up? When he was at Juve last season where we started with four-man defense. That was it. And then he played a few minutes here, a few minutes there, but it's not one that is a starter at Brazil at the moment. And maybe you enter this thinking about it. Mm, look at all the names that we see on the left as left back. Could be eh, that Juventus is taking that decision and they realized it. How can Juventus play with four-man defense? Chesney in the goal, that's a fact. Cambiazzo can be there as a left back. Danilo, going back to what he's playing with Brazil now, right back. In the middle, without Bremer, without Huysen, because you sold him and you cash in. Calafiori, that is a priority. And Jalo, because we signed Jalo. Jalo can play with his right foot, with his left foot, can play also as a right back. We can even potentially even change Jalo and Danilo if you want to. A lot of people are telling me also the rumors. Jalo, from what he's showing, could even be a right back. But imagine, right back Jalo or Danilo. Center back Jalo, Danilo or Calafiori on the uh, next side. Cambiaso can be a starting lineup in a defense that is totally different as the one that we have today. In the middle, we already spoke about it. Locatelli, Regista, not Regista. Do we want to continue to play with a Regista? There is no Pirlo available for Juve. There is no Pjanic available for Juve. A Locatelli that can move on that right side as a Mezzala. On the left side, with all that money, maybe sincerely going for a Turam. We speak about Cope Manners, Cope Manners, Cope Manners. I'm not sure. But could be a Cope Manners, could be a Turam. If Rabiot doesn't renew, you save a lot on his salary, but you don't cash in. That can be, with all that money, what you can go. Reinforce your midfield. Playing with a Verkusson, a second midfielder on top of it. And then on top, the, the, the trio that a lot of people are dreaming about. Yildiz on the left, Sole on the right, Vlaovic on top. That can be not a fantastic Juve, not a Champions League winner Juve, but a Juve that can do well, that has a sense, that has logic. Especially if you are looking at the second team, because you always play with 25, 26 players. Perin is the second goalkeeper. Mitai, or you can put Renildo that is coming back from a long injury. You can put whoever you want there as a left back. Rugani Gatti. Then you have Comenencia on the right. So you got Beppe or Comenencia, what are you speaking about? You remember that philosophy of taking two, three young next gen players, promoting them to the first team to actually save on a lot of cost? Comenencia could be one of the next one in lines to go up in the first team. Not as a starter, but as a rotational player there on the right. And you still have a lot of options. Eh? Danilo, you have Cambiaso, you have Jalo. You see? Could be. In the middle, Fagioli, Miretti. Miretti could be loaned out and then you can go with another cheap solution. You can have a Haza. I don't believe that Nicolosi will stay an extra year, but you have a Haza. Another logic of that next-gen project, the next one in line, even if at the moment he didn't renew yet. Up front, Ealing Jr. that you don't need to sacrifice. Milik, even if I believe he we will find another striker for Milik, but you never know. And Felipe Anderson for free as a rotational player on the, on the right side. That's a Juve that is, again, not a Champions League contender, but to a Juve that is having a logic in sustainability, in one big signing a la Turam or Cope Manners in the midfield. But a Juve especially that is thinking about, we play with the same system, whatever player is entering. And especially an easy Juve with that first team that can go super fast into that 4-1-4-1. The defense stays the same. Locatelli steps back and you have a four-man with Yildiz on the left, Sule on the right side, Turam, Ferguson that are there, your first uh, midfielders, and on top, Flavish. 4-1-4-1, guys. 
if you look this season Serie A, if you watched it a bit, what am I speaking about? 4-1, 4-1. Which trainer is playing with that 4-3-3 in possession that goes towards a 4-1, 4-1 in non-possession? I will not even tell you the name. Let me know the name in the comment. Thank you. Grazie, forza. You vet.